Väčšina ľudí pozná túto tvár vďaka niečomu, čo tejto dobe zúfalo chýba. Gules ocele. Oh v Tesle sa ocitol takmer na začiatku. Maka pre ňu už 15 rokov. Hlava dizajnu sú skutočne závidenia hodným menom. Franz van Holshausen. Epický mozog, zodpovedný za nadčasové krivky. Aj keď... Cybertruck pre mňa bola láska, asi až tak na piaty pohľad. Garantujem ti, že ak postavíš svoje meké tkaniny vedľa toho dvojmetrového, ocelového, nepriestrelného hoveda, v sekunde ti bude jasné, že ostatné pick sú oproti tomu tanku dievčenskou hračkou. A keď ti ho niekto bude chcieť poškrabať, zničí si na ňom kľúče. Video je Usain Bolt dvojhodinového podcastu. Franz von Holzhausen, thank you so much for joining us. I got... And I just remember walking away thinking, my gosh, here's somebody who's going to put rockets into space. Um, <laughs> You know, car is actually not that hard, and his vision for the car and his sustainable direction and message is exactly what I'm looking for. Um, so, why not? You know, and so we met a couple times, and and I don't know, rest is kind of history. But this was bigger. You know, the the, the overall mission was bigger. That the sustainability portion of it was bigger. Elon's got the he's got the concept correct. My first drive. In a roadster was with Elon, and I just thought, yeah, this is going to change the world. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he was all in, full. Like there was no doubt. Like there was no talk about hybrid or anything like that. And you know, he 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 was there constantly, along for the ride. He was invested in it. He, like we pushed each other. We talked about things. We spent a lot of time just talking about the Model S and how do we, like, the the do we do something on the front end for like a grill or not? Like all those things we like hemmed and hawed about. Ooh, how do we that's... take innovation? Like, how do we take innovation beyond the norm um, and design that into the product? So you were, you joined in 2008, you were fully on board. Roadster was coming out. I mean, you have to time. remember 2008 was a pretty rough year. Yes. Yeah. yeah. 2009 following. It and so I, I thought year, like, yeah. wow, it could be, you know, this could be really short. <laughs> okay. But I think, you know, the experience is the believing part. You know, like my job is to to, to make an attractive thing that people want or are, are curious to find out more. They're interested in it. They, um, it. they they can imagine like having that as an aspirational thing. They they aspire to it. But really when you get behind, um, you sit in the seat, you get in the, and, and experience the drive of it, you, it there's, n there's no reason for gas. You right. realize that right. it's a it's kind of a transformative experience, and you, you there's no way to communicate that. It's so hard to like just tell somebody like, "This is what it's going to be like," and you know, like, okay, whatever, whatever. It's not going to be as good as my Porsche or, or Aston Martin or whatever. But I think you get behind the wheel and you experience it, and you suddenly have this eureka moment. Like, the world doesn't need to be you know addicted to fossil fuel anymore. Right, right, right. It's actually the power is not that just that it's an EV that it's a software defined vehicle right because this is the thing that you guys did very early on that nobody saw coming they're only starting to see now because every other automotive auto manufacturer is telling me like well well tesla's really far ahead on this part because you guys the fact that you guys have, have been ota over the year updating since the start is there are car companies out there right now that sell a lot of cars they can't do that they can't they yeah. cannot give you a cool new feature tomorrow. I think what Ed's trying to say is, did you know that was an advantage? Yes, did you know that you guys were building this new, whole new category of vehicle beyond just elect electric? I, th I think we knew that that was like, that. that's where electronics were going. That's that's kind of where our world was going with phones and everything. Right. And so, and, and why does a car, why does the automotive sector have to languish 10 or 15 or 20 years behind technology? I mean, it's a yeah. highly... Like there's a ton of technology in, in, in a car, and it should be modern, should be up-to-date, should be as 
uh, as modern as your phone mm. is. Um, there's no reason not to. Yeah. And so it, that was the perspective that we had. I mean, Model S had a had an iPad in it before iPad was ever a thing. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Exactly. By yeah. a few months, yeah, yeah. it did. Like, since I was there, that yeah. you know, uh, the idea that the car should learn your habits and should be able to react to the way that you drive, not you have constantly having to like learn the car. And, and it's Owner's not just talk. fun things. We're able no, to improve right. the safety um, and like the way that the airbags trigger and the and the, and the response time to be able to make the car safer for you. Like that's an over the air update. Right. Um, and so you and, have a, and an incredibly safe car. And the next day you have an even safer car. I mean, just amazing. Yeah. So, Cybertruck was, some, uh, was an idea that Elon and I spoke about for a while. We wanted to do a pickup. Um, we had these ideas on how to make an efficient pickup pick and to really kind of peel back the, the, the onion on like, why is a pickup the way it is? Um, you know, kind of step back to a first principles perspective of like what it is that people want and, you know, look at a couple of core attributes. And we just said, you know, a, a pickup, we, we can make a pickup that drives like a sports car and has a utility of any truck out there um, and come on that into something new that people haven't seen and, you know, put the toughness on the outside where it belongs um, and the, the, the dynamic experience and all the functionality you would expect inside the car. And in kind of doing that, like putting the toughness on the outside, it was, okay, like how are we actually gonna do that? Because paint on the exterior of a car is like the most delicate thing and it seems odd that you'd have, you know, built tough, but really fragile, like a, an eggshell kind of thing on the outside of your truck. So we, we just started looking at what, what, what are tough materials. And, um, you know, there, I think um, we had a couple different directions, but stainless steel was one of them. You know, Elon had gotten, you know, really familiar with it on the rockets. And... Right. We, you know, said, hey, that's pretty damn tough and it's durable. There's a few other examples in history that show like, you know, you can, th th those cars are still driving around and they look great, you know, yep. DeLorean. Um, and you also don't need paint. And, you know, paint is a, is a tough one because not only it's fragile, but it's not, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a expensive capital investment into a factory right the paint um, shop is much more intensive consumes than a lot of energy right um, environmentally yeah, environmental vocs right you know, so if you can reduce paint from the process and still make something attractive then you know that's also a great step in a sustainability mission so we thought like let's use this you know the some of these materials and you know in using stainless steel it becomes a challenge because you can't do traditional stamping right and if you're if it's going to be tough it's going to be thick thicker than you then you can stamp so form factor very quickly came into how do you deal with this material and create you know single bends um no, no compound surface or, or forms and kind of a geometry evolved out of that um which became this really kind of simplistic shape of what the cyber truck is i thought and that that we had was just something you know no other brand is going to do it like it's pretty clear they can't they right? and mm -hmm. I mean, they could, but they won't. Right. Um, and, you know, we were able to take, you know, the, the concept in this kind of radical form, but have all the functionality and, and, and the performance, like we set out from the beginning into a truck um, that, you know, it looks different. And, and what we've found is fascinating, I think, is that it's drawing people to the product that would never dream of buying a truck. Um, yeah. It's just a radical new thing like in the manufacturing process different and we you know we wanted to create an exoskeleton and really put the toughness on the outside so it's you know the, the stainless is bulletproof um really kind of a demonstration of how tough it is the shape is actually quite aerodynamic um it's arguably more aerodynamic than a normal pickup truck the the cyber truck is so okay there's some efficiencies that come into it um as well and you know it has like there's a kind of a a, a brutal kind of stance that's well, tough and rugged brutal, i'm a and, big fan of brutalism yeah. and it definitely looks like yeah and, you know like I, you know and the interiors of our cars there's a minimalism that you get um the, the, the truck has a minimalist feel it's just kind of a vibe i've been pushing right um, 
but even the, the the prototype was the exact same length as an F one fifty. Yeah, well, yeah, so I mean, but the F one fifty is massive, right? But it's a <laughs> it's the it's the size of pickup trucks that right, you know, right. That, that's where we are with pickups. But uh, you, selling, but you but always utility, you know, in the back and and uh, you know, a cabin for four or five or six people. We we knew that that size is is the functionality and kind of the the requirements that were going to be right for this vehicle. Yeah. Okay. We, we, it, you know, it has to have a comfortable interior. It has to have the functionality of the bed. Has to be able to, you know, have off-roading capabilities. Um, you know, high suspension travel. Uh, you know, all those things. So I think what's great is that potentially maybe we've helped propel them into the marketplace sooner than they would have been, just because you know we said we're doing a truck. We showed something, and um, and and ultimately that's kind of the, the the bigger mission that we all need to be moving towards is a more sustainable future. So we can't do it alone, but having these guys come along and and changing the industry helps the overall mission so it's great you know that uh, even on the range side we're we're going to be in a g good position okay. without giving away any of the details <laughs> like how good how good <laughs> the other thing that um is somewhat you know not talked about that much but it's it's right there and it's a huge part of purchase decision is the, the supercharging network the the uh, the other Brands don't yet have a reliable uh, high-speed charging network that is, uh, like I said, f reliable. Yeah. We're continuing to populate more and more superchargers. And I think well, right, not, that was yeah, like yeah. early problem of gasoline cars, right? right. Um, yeah. There wasn't enough gas stations around. And once there was, then, you know, popularity continued to rise. I think, you know, we're, we're, we want to put our, our products out um, in front. And, you know, sometimes the media can get all spun up about things that are you know not great for the overall mission so we just hmm. let our products speak for themselves we do content we kind of we try to put out content that really helps explain you know what we're doing helps you feel more comfortable with the car look to teach you things about it um helps people like get att attracted to or, or learn things that helps them get you know maybe over the hurdle of buying a electric car and I think that's the most important part. Well, I mean, look at just all the articles that are saying that the electric cars will are stupid. They'll never make it. They're like right. not a thing. Like, don't waste your time. Right. Big waste of energy. Um, that was that's been the past. What I don't know as long as I've been a Tesla. Right. Still kind of you know out there a bit, but and it's the tide is turning. Well, I think it it's it's a technology kind of showcase, um, and it it proves that. Uh, electric cars are better than anything else out there, right? And it just shows that you can kind of outperform anything. Like a, a Model S, you know, especially for the price point, is for a while was the fastest production car on the period, uh, yes. yeah, quickest, yeah, yeah, yeah. you could yeah. buy, yeah. And for and the next thing was like you could have, you could own a stable of Model S's <laughs> in every color. And then some give some to your friends for the price of the next, you know, fastest Begun. car. Yeah. Um, and that's kind of crazy, and that's normally aspirated. And every year, the cars get faster and faster and faster. It's just the it's the challenge of the limit of physics, the limit of physics, the limit of physics. I think, uh, I think, um, and and getting there, you know, um, and and I think we're right on that cusp. Um, we're right on that cusp. I mean, well, in relation to a Cybertruck, I think, you know, the things that are important are torque and power and, you know, capability and transferring that torque to the ground so you can haul the stump out or you can pull a trailer or you can do all those things. Or, you know, I mean, well, I've, I've like a, a truck is like, it's like a Swiss army knife, Multi -tool, like right. has to be able to do anything. And, you know, you have to be able to like have a product that you're going to put it in a situation that we never dreamed of. But it has to be able to survive and do what you want it to do. 100% torque at zero to yeah. wherever. Yeah. And in a plaid, it's just zero until you run out of RPMs. Right. 100% torque. Yeah. And, you know, that's amazing. Like the, the, the carbon overwrap sleeve on that motor allows that, you know. Right. There's, no, there's no fall off of power. We, we're not traditionalists. We don't look at like cycles because everybody else does cycles. It doesn't, right. you know, what's, what's right for us and our, you know, and our, you know, customers and, um, you know, we're just want to constantly improve. So there's constant improvement that's happening through the course of the, the life of the Model S. Um, and we don't wait to bundle that into something, you know, as soon as we can 
get it into a customer's hands, we want to get it there. So I just don't. I just don't want to be driving the same thing as everybody else. Do, do you, no. Yeah, I mean, or or you take a, a less safe, more inferior car as your option. I don't know. What? If you have kids, yeah. like, or, or just you care for your, you know, well-being, the. the uh, any Tesla is the safest car on the road. Like, how, how do you no, I mean, reconcile I think, I think, that? Look, I mean, look, Mer Mercedes and Volvo could argue against that pretty. But know. probability of injury, and it's you know proven not by us, but by other standards, and it's very public that the t Teslas are the safest cars on the road. Mercedes, Mercedes, Volvo, Volvo argue against that pretty Tesla's are the safest cars on the road so so uh, it's just uh, just an argument I'm just saying yeah, yeah you know, okay, like, okay. Freaking, we will fine. constantly continue to improve it another thing to think about is you know we're, we're kind of on the cusp of full autonomy in, in driverless cars right so are we though kind of around the corner it's right it's right there it's right there. It's right there. It's right there. Maybe because it's going to change the way that we interact with vehicles. I, 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 but it's just. I, 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 but it's just. It's going to. There's going to be a new dynamic that's kind of put into the you know purchase decision or the the way that you're using transportation. Oh. It's a space that you want to be comfortable in. You want to be safe in. Um, and it, and it needs to get you from A to B still. And you, you, you know, you still want to step out of something that you feel confident and, and, uh, you know, attractive in. Why are you still around? Like, why don't you, <laughs> you, you, you cash out and go and put your feet up in Malibu and like, what, what, or what's next? Or like, like, are you, is there, we, there, there, we have so like, there's so much cool stuff that we're working on that I obviously can't tell you about. There's like, the mission isn't complete yet. Um, okay. And I think I, I just believe in the things that we're working on um, will continue to be, like I said, transformative um, in transportation to people's lives and enrich in our lives and help us get to a more sustainable future. And yeah, I just don't feel like I'm the the, the job is done yet. Do that, it'll like, be it'll be it's yeah. 15 years this year. Yeah. I, I don't know that anybody's really figured out how to um, create a business plan where it's a profitable enterprise. You right. know, like we figured out how to make generally affordable electric vehicles that are you know, like a joy to drive and something you aspire to and, and, you know, great to look at and, and just, you know, all the things you would expect in transportation, a lot more, we're giving you a lot more. Um, and I don't know that anybody's got that recipe yet that, that, and, and made it profitable. Really? Come on. Yeah. You do, you do customer deliveries? Sure. Oh, all right. I mean, it's a great way to, to like either interact with a new customer or just see like the what we've created and 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 the joy of like somebody receiving it and getting it for the first time and, and just seeing that emotion is is amazing um and i think it's you know it's good to be out and speaking with a customer base okay. like directly not through yeah. some channels you no know? that's great um because inevitably they have they have <laughs> <laughs> they have questions they you know have ideas and if we can learn on learn from you know the, the our customers how to make our product better then i, I want to do that you know and as fast as possible okay they're like elon is passionate and driven and motivated and i don't know that any like i don't feel that from other leaders of hmm. other manufacturers necessarily you know right. to oh. to the degree Okay, and right. and he, you know, he's created a, a recipe that's that that works, and it's special. I, and I don't see that same kind of recipe anywhere else. Okay, it's right there. <laughs>